40% of Americans 65 and older with student debt are in default. Loan totals currently $1.7 trillion nationwide. On America's student debt crisis. For the millions buckling under crushing debt. Let's cover some quick facts about student debt in America. In the United States, over 43 million people hold student loan debt, with the average debt holder having about $39,000. That's a staggering amount. The total student debt in the U.S. is over $1.5 trillion as of 2021. That's more than the total U.S. auto debt or the total U.S. medical debt. It's been like this for decades, as long as I can remember. And you can be excused for thinking that this is how college tuition always worked in the United States. That university has always been expensive, and the increased costs are just a fact of our new economy. But that's not true. There was a time in this country when public university was virtually tuition free, where the federal and state government funded public universities and considered accessible higher education to be a state asset. But like many other things in the United States, a major political shift changed that dramatically. Pat Brown, like Lyndon Johnson, was an organizer of power, the willing tool of those who believed in tax and tax, spend and spend. And if I've learned anything in my time as a public policy researcher, if something in America is going really wrong, it's always a safe bet to blame Ronald Reagan. This is why you have student loan debt. But academic freedom cannot be used for an ex as an excuse for fiscal license or as a screen for excessive spending. Ronald Reagan and many other right-wing presidents did not have a good relationship with college students or college faculty. He held a particular distaste for the campus activism that was reaching its peak in the late 60s during his run for governor of California. On the campaign trail, he did his very best to paint campus protests about the draft, the war in Vietnam, and civil rights as illegitimate. Or do we no longer think it necessary to teach self-respect, self-discipline, and respect for law and order? Will we allow a great university to be brought to its knees by a noisy dissident minority? Will we meet their neurotic vulgarities with vacillation and weakness? He considered these the actions of beatniks, anarchists, and filthy speech advocates who simply wanted to riot and cause chaos. This wasn't about academic freedom and integrity or the preservation of civil liberties. This was about moral decency and the character of a nation. All of this language should sound familiar to you. This is the Reagan playbook. That interest is because this generation, these young people, have been indoctrinated, they have been hammered throughout their lifetime with the idea of the all-important security. He used it when he ran for governor, he used it when he ran for president, and Republicans have been pulling from this playbook for decades now. So when Ronald Reagan became the governor of California, he went on the attack. He cut California state funding for public higher education, started to set the precedent for public universities to shift to a tuition-based model, and he even went as far as to bring the National Guard in to quash student protests. He was able to do this because he moved the public discourse on higher education. Rather than seeing access to higher education as a national asset, he framed universities as a problem. Unpatriotic institutions, welfare queens that drained public funds, practically socialism. Under his tenure, not only did they cut state funding for public universities, but they also changed laws allowing higher fees to be assessed from students in order to make up for budget shortfalls. And to further bridge the artificially created budget gap, they let colleges take in greater numbers of out-of-state students who were expected to pay higher fees, which twisted the incentives for universities to recruit from pools of out-of-state students. After his tenure as governor, Reagan continued his assault of public education as president. Overall grants to support education decreased, and federal guidance around student load initiatives started to take shape. A raft of states followed the lead of California in decreasing public spending on higher education. And why not? Reagan set the agenda. He won a landslide victory in his race for governor and spent his entire campaign villainizing college students and universities. He did the same during his campaign for presidency, and he won 49 states. The message was clear. The American people didn't care if you defunded every important public institution we had as long as you don't raise our taxes. 1984 was the last year that a university class received more grants than they did loans. After that, America abandoned funding its public universities at a level that doesn't saddle generations of students with crippling debt. 
America became a country that thinks reducing deficit spending is more important than social mobility, but never actually cut deficit spending. The federal deficit actually went up substantially during the Reagan presidency, which means public higher education was gutted essentially for nothing. Reagan was successful. He rebranded public institutions as wasteful, debt-generating welfare queens, even though it's been clear for decades that investments in public universities and higher education pay dividends. It boosts the economy, creates jobs and innovation, and allows for more social mobility. A more highly educated citizenry produces better outcomes for the country as a whole. But that highly educated citizenry are also prone to act out against the current political order, as they did in the 60s and the 70s. Reagan and his advisors couldn't allow that to happen, so they set a new agenda and changed American life, perhaps irreparably. So the next time you're wondering why you have so much student loan debt, remember that you have Ronald Reagan to blame. And not because America couldn't pay its bills, or because investing in higher education isn't smart, no. Because a right-wing, reactionary president didn't like college protesters. <laughs>